Now that you've seen some of the pros and cons associated with the prototype pattern, let's take a look at how the code looks and the general structure that you'll follow for this pattern. Now what's nice about all these patterns that I'll show you in this course is that once you get the general pattern down, you can apply it to virtually any object out there, whether it's a car object, an invoice, a calculator like I'm going to show, or something else. In the case of the prototype pattern, the way it works is you first have to define your object and associate it with a constructor. Now the way we do that is you simply say the name of the object and then you follow that with a function. Now any parameters that you want to initialize that object with can be passed in through this constructor here. So you see I'm passing an EQ parameter. I'm then using that EQ a parameter to locate a DOM element that has that ID and then associating that to the EQ dot, or EQCTL. Now the EQCTL parameter that you see there you'll notice that we're prefixing it with the this keyword and I mentioned this in the previous section that you'll see this used fairly frequently with this pattern. Now the reason for that is when this is called, when calculator is invoked and there's a new instance created, we want to associate this variable with that instance and we do that by saying this dot EQCTL and then assigning it to the value passed in up here in the constructor. So that's kind of the first section is we have this anonymous function which inside of it will have all our variables and if you had 50 variables you'd have of course 50 of these lines right here. Now the next part is we need the actual functions. Now there's a couple ways to do this but this particular pattern is going to go in and we're going to use the prototype keyword and this is what I mentioned earlier is available directly in the JavaScript language so it allows you to add functionality or extend it on objects. So calculator has already been defined and associated with a constructor. Now what we're going to do is define the different functions that we want the calculator object to have. Now I just have one simple one here which I'm going to call add and you'll notice I'm actually using an object literal here. Here's the start of it, here's the end of it, and then here's the name and then the value of course goes from here down to here. Now I only have one in this example. When I get to the demos here in just a moment, I'll show you some others. But in this case, the add function is going to take an X and a Y. We'll simply add those together. And then we're going to assign the value to the EQCTL that was passed or assigned up in the constructor area. Notice again the use of this. Now this is a little bit tricky because if you're calling it directly from the object, this represents the object. But if this function calls another function, the context of this can change to the caller. So in this example here, because add would be called directly from the calculator object itself, this would represent this object, which would be the calculator object. So it's not a problem, but as we get into different patterns, I'll show you where it can be a little bit tricky. And I'll give you a couple workarounds for working with the this keyword. So that's how you would define a prototype pattern with JavaScript for a calculator object. Now this is a very simple example. I have a much more robust one coming up that I'll get to in the demos. Now how would you actually call it? Well, see that's the good thing with these patterns. Instead of just calling a function directly, we can actually new up an instance of this calculator, call the constructor, and then pass in a different value to it. From there we can use the object instance to call into this add function that's defined within the prototype. So this is the basic pattern that you'll follow and it would look like this. So you notice we have a new calc object, we create a new calculator, we pass in the target, this is where the output of the add function will be written to, the DOM element, and then we simply say calc.add and in this case we pass 2 plus 2. And by doing this, you'll notice that number one, it looks very kind of modularized or encapsulated. It looks like traditional programming where you create a new instance and you work with it. It's going to be a lot easier to maintain. You'll typically keep this in one file. And so in that one file, you'd have all your calculator functionality. And then we also are now avoiding the global scope of JavaScript. The add and the variables that you see in here, they're actually within the calculator. They're encapsulated. Therefore, they're not going to spill over to the global scope. So now that we've taken a look at the basic structure for the prototype pattern, let's jump into some examples.